Hey everyone, so today's video is actually going to be a quick one, and it's going to be on an OG character, and that's Fire Melisa. I think she's gone up a lot in value uh, as the game progressed. She has an amazing trait that really isn't ever going to fall off. Um, speed continues to be a really important factor in this game. It's not the end-all be-all, but it is very important, especially when it comes to the PvP setting, whether it's normal arena, 3v3, or RTA, uh, and even guild versus guild at this point now. Uh, so I did want to highlight her, especially because there's been a lot of really strong green heroes that have come out and uh, have been pretty prominent in the meta, actually. And there's also, you know, some uh, a green epic in Baron that this hero is really strong against. So, uh, yeah, the reason why I think she's gaining a lot of steam, you know, there's some pretty good green heroes in in the arena meta. Kasim, who I personally love, I think some people don't think he's that good, but I, I disagree. I think he is solid. Rick is just a monster. I'm really excited to build him in the future. Um, he does need to be A5, though, I think, to maximize his full potential. But Twitchy uh, uses him, and Rick is just really strong. The fact that he loops back around to his ultimate is cool. But, uh, you know, she doesn't directly counter these heroes. One, because Rick has stealth and Kasim has dodge up. But she can take the dodge off of Kasim early on and make him really vulnerable to the rest of, you know, uh, your opponent's picks. Rick kind of gets around uh, Fire Melisa, but uh, I was just noting that he is a strong wood hero. Now, Ashlyn has always been strong. She hasn't been as good lately, but she still has some merit in the meta. Elise, who I think is a really strong control character. Seema, I think, is underrated as well in the arena settings. And then Cordelia and Jerome, both these characters. So, you know, Baron... Cordelia, Jerome, Seema, Elise, Ashlyn, and Kasim to an extent. Like, those are a lot of strong green heroes that Fire Melisa has a, a definite impact on. So, that's why I do think that she is a hero that you should, you should definitely build. I think she's going to help you with those heroes. So... With that being said, let's just talk her, talk about her a little bit. She is one of the OGs, right? <laughs> Since the game came out, I'm pretty sure she's been around. Uh, you can tell that by her ascensions. She has the rare Ascension 2 um, on her trait, which is pretty cool. And she gets this Vanguard ability, which we'll talk about right now. But if you want to utilize Fire Melisa to her fullest potential, you only need her Ascended 4. I'm sure plenty of people have her at Max Ascend. But if you're just starting the game out, uh, you know, four Ascensions to get that speed plus 15 is going to be really important. So, talking about her kit here. She has this Vanguard ability, right? This Vanguard 1 gives less stats, but this Vanguard 2, which is what you really want to have before you start utilizing Fire Melisa, is she gets a 45% attack percentage, crit damage, and speed increase at the very start of the match. And that goes down by 15% uh, each turn. So even for two turns, she should be some of the fastest uh, characters on the field. The first turn, for sure, the fastest. She's actually the fastest character in the game. Um, so really awesome trait. Now, just to give you some perspective, like if you look at my stats here, uh, she has 278 speed. So if you put that into a calculator, she has 278 speed times that 45% at the beginning. So you add that additional 125, she goes up to 400 speed. Pretty, pretty cool stuff. Um, and then also her crit damage is going up by 45% and her attack. So very, very strong trait. It makes her a really nice single target threat at the beginning of the match to kind of take out a, a problem character that your opponent might be using. So, you know, her basic special and ultimate, they do have some effects that could come up, but for the most part, she is just there for damage. 
So I wouldn't worry about all the other things. Just if you can get enough damage stats on her, she's going to be there to be a sniper, essentially. She's going to take out a problem character um, that, that your opponent has at the beginning of the match if she goes through in regards to, like, RTA. Now, with uh, arena offense and arena defense, your opponent doesn't have a chance that, I mean, uh, an option. They have to face her. <laughs> Uh, so her basic ability, it does 110% damage whenever she's booked uh, to a character, and it increases by 30% if they don't have a positive effect. Now, she's never using her basic at the beginning, so that's rarely going to come up, but if she does survive and they keep her around, that additional 30% damage is not nothing. It's an okay effect for a basic ability. On her special ability, she does 165% damage to an enemy plus 50% bonus damage if the target is affected by this no positive effects. Now, her ultimate also does no positive effects here, right, at 220% damage by removing a positive effect on an enemy. You're never really building her focus, so you're not going to land this, uh, but the... Uh, the multiplier on this ultimate is what matters, and it hits pretty hard, especially with her trait ability coming into play. But this special ability, this plus 50% bonus damage if the target is affected by no positive effects, she actually has some pretty relevant uh, companions here that have this effect that you can utilize her with in your arena offense teams or arena defense or whenever you're picking RTA. So, you know, Oderic is obviously a, a really strong character right now. Uh, I wish I had him, uh, but he puts up no positive effects, so that's something that you can pair uh, Fire Melisa with uh, to do some additional damage. You know, Aubrey isn't really uh, super good right now, but for the people who do have limited amounts of light and dark characters, you know, it's always an okay pick. Garnett's pretty good. Desdemona's obviously really good. Uh, Andre has fallen out a little bit, uh, but Badmar is alive and well in all of the arena modes, as well as RTA. So uh, her special ability does kind of pair well with that as well. So going back to this, we went over all of her abilities. Like I said, these are her stats. These are not really good stats at all, guys. I, I've just been using her for speed, but whenever the next gear event comes around... Uh, I am going to rebuild this Fire Melisa, and she's going to be a main pick for me in uh, RTA going forward. I do have her fully booked out. She does benefit a lot from books. Um, you know, even this physique tree, which is usually not super important for characters, this speed to attack, granting attack boost equal to 100% speed, this is huge. I mean, she gets so much speed at the beginning of the round. And... I'm, I'm still not even sure if this pertains to base speed or total speed stats. I, I don't know if it calculates it in at the start of the match whenever her trait kicks in, but even so, she's being built pretty quick, and her attack stat is, uh, is going to benefit from this. So all of her uh, trees are going to matter. So 15 of 15 is pretty nice. She does get crit rate, which I think is good, even though she's only a you know, a PvP character. Although I think you can utilize her in faction challenges. So the crit rate is definitely still good. And the crit damage is really nice. Um, the other option that she would have had was, you know, some kind of attack boost and then speed here, which also would have been kind of cool. But I do think this is probably one of the more beneficial trees for her. We went over the ascensions as well. I just have her in all speed gear, and it's nothing really to write home about. I just have her kind of fast with some random stuff on her to make sure that she's outspeeding some of the people that I need her to outspeed. Her relics are not really that good at all. It's just on there because I had like these junk random extra ones. So some of the ways that she is is utilized in you know normal arena is she's usually paired up with someone like light nick right light nick really uh lets you outspeed a lot of people and he's going to boost the rest of your team with attack stats do really good damage himself 
This team is not ideal because uh, this Aurea here is going to taunt Lightning and Fire Melisa because she'll have the most attack on the team. But this is a nice instance where she can come in and she can actually eat this uh, taunt and she'll do both. She'll eat both of those taunts. So uh, from here, you know, we'll probably pick, you know, characters like this. Hopefully, uh, actually, we probably need someone like Rosalie to deal with this Baron. So something like this. Hopefully I win. That'd be embarrassing. But uh, here you're just using the Fire Melisa to eat up the Aurea uh, taunts here, just like that. Here we're going to use Elise to get rid of that uh, pesky Divine Yolanda. And then we'll clear this Baron. And then here we'll use uh, Thor on Hyam. And then this Divine Yolanda is going to come back. But thankfully we have this uh, unkillable up on the Rosalai, but Thor tanked the uh, ultimate anyway. So not the ideal kind of showing for Fire Melisa, but that is you know an application that you can certainly utilize if you need someone to eat up both the speed and attack, you know, uh, hit from... Uh, Aurea, you definitely can. Now, a team like this, this is a really nice uh, team. So a lot of Divine Yolandas can be very fast, right? So here, even if you don't have Light Nick, you can bring in your Fire Melisa to take care of someone like a Jabez or this Urion uh, to make sure that uh, the threat is kind of neutralized. This person does have an Ascended Urion, though, so he does have the possibility of deflecting the hit of the Fire Melisa. So in this instance, I'd probably bring in a uh, Light Nick just so we can do some really nice damage and then have Fire Melisa kind of clean up. And then we'll just have you know the random Zoltan pick. Uh, he's really not going to be utilized here. He's just there for... Uh, insurance purposes so here you know our our light nick and our fire melisa are outspeeding this divine yolanda right which is what we want do a lot of damage here to that urion here we can pick off the rest of the divine if it didn't deflect that's why i was saying like my uh my build isn't amazing that was a little unlucky but in the end we should still win this. Um, the Zoltan insurance. <laughs> but this is this is what she does. She she's in there just to boost people like Light Nick. She's in there to eat the taunts. She's in there to snipe. So hopefully we can bring up another uh, another team here like this one. Right. This is a pretty nice one too. Cordelia and Ashlyn. Right. So let's just bring in some, some random people here. I can't bring in Roselai because the Cordelia is going to, to hit her up. Let's just, I, I'm not going to bring in Light Nick. We'll bring in someone like Kasim. So if you have a well-built Fire Melisa, she can 100% one-shot a Cordelia. Um, you can bring in this Rage Aura to, to help even more. I don't know if mine can one-shot just because she's so poorly built, but let's see. So really close. Sadly, it did not get the job done. But if I, if I really prioritize her stats, I, th I think we can get the job done for sure. We'll finish this up here, but that's that's what she's going to be built for. She can also there uh, snipe the Garnet if you're more concerned about you know this AOE sleep or whatever. 
this is why I brought in the Kasim to take care of that. But yeah, like I said, this is just a simple, quick video trying to showcase that she's she's got a lot of potential to outspeed. Her Vanguard doesn't count for the Cordelia. You know, it doesn't count as a buff, so she won't get morphed or anything like that and move Cordelia to the top of the top of the uh, turn order. All of those pleasantly nice things, guys. Speed, it's important. It's not the end-all be-all, but she does help you win that race if... Uh, if you need to see like this is another one here this late nick wants to go first with this halia uh but we're gonna outspeed him for sure because of our uh fire melisa so let's just do this last battle and uh we'll be on our way so there you go so our epic outsped you know one of the fastest characters in the game in uh in halia so we'll go in here. Our Fire Melisa is going to take out uh, this Rosalai, which could be an issue, you know, like for my Elise or something like that. We have Kasim take out the Halia. And then we're just going to ride off into the sunset as soon as this uh, <clears throat> Light Nick dies. So, I mean, as you're seeing here, that, that Fire Melisa, she's dying as soon as she does her job. Here, her job is to just speed up the Light Nick and then pick off somebody after he does the damage. And it's as simple as that. Um, so, that's all I got, guys. Simple one. I do want to remind everybody that uh, I will be streaming on Twitch here in about an hour, probably an hour after this video goes up. It's going to be 11.30 Central Time, so 12.30 Eastern Time. Uh, hopefully I catch you there, and uh, yeah, I'll catch you on the next one. See ya.